it seems for all four paradoxes, one of the things that comes up all the time is it's infinity that's screwing us over all the time. Yeah. Does, doesn't that mean infinity, there's a problem with infinity or is there a problem with us? Some people might think, yeah, there is this problem with infinity. Um, I don't think it's a problem with infinity per se. I think it's a problem with the way we think about infinity. Sometimes it's just that our intuitions need to change. Sometimes the problem is that we don't have the right concepts there in the first place to reason about infinity and uh, either the mathematics or our everyday un understanding has to come together in a better way. You work in philosophy now. Do the two belong together? Sometimes, sometimes it feels like the two belong together really nicely. Other times it feels like you guys are messing with things that aren't really your business. <laughs> I think in these cases they fit together really well. Because whenever a mathematician stops cranking through the equations and starts thinking about how should I understand this, or looks at his equations and says, something doesn't quite feel right here. Why are things working like this? They're starting to do philosophy. And whenever a philosopher starts thinking about how do I tease through the consequences of this? What follows from this? She's doing a bit of mathematics. She's doing a bit of logic. So the area in which philosophy and mathematics intersect, for me, is one of the most fascinating ones. But it's also one of the hardest, especially when you've got infinity in there. To be someone who discusses and thinks about the philosophy of mathematics, how good at mathematics do you have to be? I don't think you have to be particularly good. You have to know a bit of the basics, but it's like a philosopher who discusses languages. You don't have to speak many languages to understand or theorise about how languages work. And I think in the same way, many of the wonderful things about mathematics can be talked about philosophically in a very simple way. Infinity, you get the idea of infinity just by counting through the natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and thinking about doing that without stopping. You don't need much mathematical sophistication to do that. A lot of the people I know who are passionate about mathematics really think that mathematics is this fundamental truth, though. Like, it, there's no ambiguity about mathematics. It's the one thing there is no ambiguity about. You seem to be suggesting otherwise sometimes. I think that a pure mathematical theory is unambiguous. Um, the question is when we try to apply it to logic or human reasoning or our world in some way, it's not that we're questioning the theory itself, we're really asking which theory is the right theory to use. We might have a whole bunch of different theories, which one should we apply in this case? And that's where the ambiguity or the philosophy comes in. Infinity is not a number then. A lot of people like, when people say, what's your favourite number or what's a big number, people say infinity. You don't treat infinity like a number. That's right, yeah. What, what is it? That's a good question. I guess it's primarily a concept we have, or, or better than that, it's a way of sizing things. So there are no infinite... Uh, infinity is not a number, but some numbers are infinitely big. Some collections of things are infinitely big. So suppose we take all the natural numbers together. None of those are infinitely big. Each one is a finite number, but there's infinitely many of them. So if we were asked to count them, we'd say there's an infinite collection. If we looked at sets of things, there's infinitely many of those. So we need that concept of infinity there, not to count two, but as a way of counting things. Okay, so maybe people are wondering, well, mathematics is very abstract. What kind of practical value does it have? When we're thinking about the mathematical theory of rational decision-making, managing risk, that's not just an abstract mathematical theory or something that philosophers discuss. Getting the right theory is very important when we think about things like catastrophic global risk. How should we manage that kind of risk? Or safety in transport. How should we balance one risk against another? You want the right kind of reasoning there. You want to have good premises but reason through them in a rational way. But in order to do that, you need the right mathematical theory of what rational reasoning is. Do you deal much with mathematicians, like academic mathematicians in your work? Do you go over and meet with them and discuss things, or are they like another world to you? Like, does your work bring you into contact with them? The, the mathematicians I'm in contact most with are either logicians. So these are people who question one kind of logic, 
like I was saying, there's lots of different theories out there and they're looking at different theories of logic. How should logic be changed for different situations? And also physicists who are also very interested in mathematics for modelling the physical world. What do physicists and mathematicians think of the philosophers who sit over here in a different building and mull over what Plato used to say about this and that? Do they think you guys are time wasters or do they think you're important? I think there are mathematicians and physicists who uh, just want to shut up and calculate. And then there are those who care about what it all means. So Einstein was one of those. He was a philosopher as well as a, a wonderful mathematician and physicist. So I think the most interesting for me mathematicians and physicists are the ones who care about what their work means about the world around us. And they're really philosophers too. I think Aristotle is probably the most famous philosopher to have uh, discussed infinity. So right back in ancient times, and his idea was because of paradoxes like the ones we've been talking about, we shouldn't have the concept of a completed infinity. We should have a potential infinity, infinity that is a potential to get bigger and bigger, but it isn't actually yet or ever going to be infinite in reality. That sounds interesting. What does that mean? Well, it's the idea of, say we're counting through the numbers. We can go on as long as we want. And perhaps time is like that, going on forever. But we don't, right now, have anything that's infinite. So we can't talk about infinity as a thing. We can only talk about, about it as a, a process that can go on and on. And maybe in this way we get rid of some of these worries about, here we've got an infinite hotel or, or whatever. <laughs>